Hola a todo el mundo. Hey guys, um, so Katie up here again in the academy just for our second lesson now for sixth year higher level Spanish, okay? And to be entirely honest with you as well, this is going to be really handy for kind of anyone with any level of Spanish. If you're doing higher or ordinary level for sixth year, absolutely fine. There might even be a lot of stuff here that for people doing the new junior cycle, especially when it comes to this section here, our useful vocab all about our free time is going to be really handy for you guys for some of your comprehensions as well. So you might want to just keep an eye out on that as well. Okay. So same thing as normal, we're going to do normal class, keep things on track. And um, we've got your verbs here, so if you want to pause again and just kind of go through those um, before we get into our actual lesson, okay? So our verbs for today, I watch TV every day. He used to be nice, it's important to do more. It's important that we do more, and I would make, okay? So maybe pause here, give those a go, and I'm just going to go through your frase del día, okay? So over here we've got the verb ponerse las pilas, right? Ponerse las pilas is the verb to like to get started with something. So, podemos utilizar eso en el examen oral, quizás para hablar de los estudios, para hablar de la preparación para el examen final, lo que quieras. Okay, so to get started with something. Now, just to show you how you could use that in a sentence, we would have something like, tengo que, like I have to. So because then I've got a reflexive verb and I'm talking about myself, I'm actually going to, because I'm leaving this bit in the infinitive, I'm going to change this pronoun to me and I'm going to add it to the end of my verb, okay? So tengo que ponerme las pilas con mis estudios, with my studies. Kind of like I need to get a move on, like I need to get started with this ASAP, okay? All right, so let's have a look then at our verbs. So like in the last lesson, we have a couple here in the imperfect, right? So I watch the TV every day. Fair enough, we're not watching the TV anymore, so we could argue that it's completed, but because I have those keywords every day, I want to use the imperfect. And again, it's one of my three irregulars. Veía la tele. And the reason that is la tele is because this is actually short for la televisión. And we know that in Spanish, if a word ends in ión, it's going to be feminine, okay? So ve la tele. Cada día, or todos los días. He used to be nice again. I'm using the verb to be, and I'm going to use the verb ser for that because I'm describing him. Okay, so it's, a, it's an attribute that he has, an attribute that he has, and it's one of my three irregulars in Latin. So era, simpatico, he used to be nice. Okay, it's important to do more. So literally, let's just translate this step by step. Okay, so es, it is importante. Then the verb to do, I'm just going to keep it in the infinitive like I have in, in English. So, hacer, and then more is más. Now, and then this is for the people that maybe are trying to kind of push themselves a little bit and they're trying to just get the subjunctive in nice and easy into their answers, okay? So, I'm going to start off the same as the last one. So, es importante. Now, my next word is that, okay? So, es importante que. And that structure in grammar is what we call an impersonal expression, okay? So, there's no... There's no person involved here. I got the word it, okay? So I don't have he or she or anyone's name. I've got an impersonal expression, which is going to trigger the second verb here being in the subjunctive mood, okay? So I'm going to use the verb hacer. It's important que hagamos más. And with all due respect, if maybe you're in a position N6 or you still haven't a clue what the subjunctive is, you don't know how to use it, that's absolutely fine. But there is a lovely phrase now that you can use and throw that into, like, you know, so many different opinion pieces. Um, it's, it could be your conclusion for nearly every opinion piece. You could say it in your oral exam. And um, we need to do more, like talking about the coronavirus. If we need to do more, like we need to be there for more for people, anything like that. Lovely little phrase to have and not too hard to remember or to structure or even to pronounce. Just make sure if you are saying it that you don't pronounce that H, okay? Because loads of people will go in and say, like, hi or hagamos or anything like that. You don't say hola, you say hola. Okay, H in Spanish is silent, so it's importante que hagamos más. Now, I would make the verb hacer, keyword here is would, so I'm going to put it into the conditional. And it's irregular in the conditional, it's haría. Okay, so haría, and that's the whole thing. I would make. Okay, now, so if you were in, I just want to grab the sheet, sorry. If you were in school yesterday, um, if you happened to see me before you escaped from the coronavirus, um, I was trying to find all my six years to give you guys this sheet, right? Um, if you didn't get it, if you just want to message me on my Instagram or leave a comment or get in touch with the school's Instagram, um, I can send you over a copy or even just send you a photo or something of it if you want it for reference. And um, for the time being, even if you don't have this or you're not one of my students, all you're going to be doing for this, we're going to be doing a little bit of revision on my free time. Now, this is just to kind of 
again, keep us on track a little bit with the oral exam, because God knows when they're actually going to happen and everyone's freaking out, okay? So what I'm going to have over here, right, so I've got my verbos clave, so my key verbs, okay? Then I've got my vocabulario útil, so like useful bits of vocab, just handy, easy things to remember. I'm going to have complex questions, so especially for the, you know, the students that are really starting to push for H1 and they want to initiate more difficult conversation, um, might be good for you guys. And also then we can't forget about the basics, where we're going to get the bulk of our easy to get marks, okay? Um, and when we get finished with that, if you, have, if you have this sheet, or if I get to send you a copy of it, um, there's going to be a little translation exercise in the back that is going to feed off what we have in this, okay? So let's have a look at this now together and see what we're going to fill in, right? So what I'm going to start off with is for the key verbs, I'm going to do all of the basic verbs in, in blue, and then I'm going to have some verb structures and stuff that might be a little bit new or things that you might have forgotten about. I'm going to do those in black, okay? So if you're doing this, you want to follow the same kind of ideas as me. I'm going to have basics in blue and then more difficult ones in black, okay? So we're going to start off with, we're talking about our free time, okay? Let's keep this nice and easy. We're going to have jugar, is the verb to play a sport, and that's going to be followed by the preposition a. Talk about an instrument. Tocar, un instrumento. That's also the verb to touch, okay? So tocar is the verb to play, to play music or to play an instrument, okay? Then I'm going to have the verb hacer, to do or to make. I might also use preparar. Preparar we can use for making food, um, for preparing yourself for the day, anything like that, okay? So preparar. Then I might talk about um, practicing an instrument, or I might talk about practicing a sport. You could use the verb practicar. Okay, um, and then I would have the verb pasar, which we know is the verb to pass time or to spend time. If I'm going to talk about spending money, which I also like to do an awful lot of my free time as well, I'm going to use the verb gastar, okay? So pasar is just to spend time. Then we would have things like cantar, to sing. And then related to these, we would have things like bailar, to dance, actuar, be the verb to act. And um, we could also say hacer teatro, and that would be to act or to do drama. We have things then like dibujar, which is the verb to draw. Pintar would be to paint. And um, if you like cooking, cocinar. And then we've got our three basics. We've got escuchar, the verb to listen. Ver is to watch, and mirar is to look at. Okay, so there are kind of basic ones. So especially maybe if you're a third year watching this, if you're a fifth year watching this, and maybe you are really struggling with Spanish and you are even maybe struggling a little bit with ordinary level, these are the kind of basics, these are our bread and butter for our verbs, okay? Now, swapping colours, I'm moving on to something that might be a little bit, a little bit different, a little bit more of a structure versus just one verb. So I'm just going to actually number these beside them so you know which bit goes what, okay? So my first one is going to be the verb quedar. Con amigos, right? And this is the verb that we would use in Spanish to say, like, I meet up with my friends, so quedo con mis amigos, um, or like I hang out with my friends, whatever, okay? So that's a lovely little verb to have. And then maybe on a Sunday, you, in your free time, you might always have a family dinner. And I would use the verb structure cenar en familia, which is a bit weird, but that is the way of saying, like, I have a family dinner, I have dinner with my family all the time. Okay, if I want to go shopping, I use the structure ir de compras. Okay, and then, so I've got two more. So the next one then is going to be the verb merendar. And just, sorry, I'm just conscious that everyone's able to read that. Okay, so that is spelled M-E-R-E-N-D-A-R. Um, this is, I love that Spanish has a specific verb for this, right? This is quite literally the verb to have an after school or an afternoon snack, okay? Um, so if you maybe, if you're talking about your daily routine or what you do after school, um, so puede decir algo como, pues, después de las clases, merriendo, um, tomo algo poquito para la merienda y después um, sigo, sigo con mis estudios o sigo estudiando, something like that, okay? But just if you do want to write that verb down, if you're going to use it, it is a radical changing verb. So if I want to say I have a snack, I say merriendo, okay, not merriendo. Um, and then the last one is, if you have a part-time job, you would say trabajo a tiempo parcial. And I would always say to students, I would definitely recommend 
bringing up the fact whether or not you have a job or you had a job, something like that, especially with all your respect in Dublin, um, it's not quite as normal as it would be in other parts of the country. So for your oral exam, definitely try and bring that up if you do or you have had, if you have had a job, um, just to kind of keep the examiner a little bit more engaged with the content that you're actually using, okay? Um, so there's your verb, so that's the bulk of our grammar. Okay, now next thing then we're going to have a look at is our vocab. Now again, a lot of this might be just revision, which is absolutely fine, but I'm going to start off with places, okay, so lugares. So I'm talking about places that you could be doing your hobbies in or spending your free time. We're going to start off with basic stuff, nice and easy, nice and easy to pronounce. El cine, el gimnasio, and don't be afraid to get that like very hard G sound, okay, el gimnasio. It's like you have popcorn stuck at the back of your throat when you're trying to get it out, okay? El cine, el gimnasio. Then we've got places like el polideportivo, so like a sports hall. Um, we've got la cancha y el campo. Okay, so la cancha is like a court and el campo would be a pitch. So un campo de fútbol, una cancha de tenis, okay? Um, you might have a job en un bar, so el bar, el restaurante, whatever. Now, the words that I would recommend you use for your bedroom would be el dormitorio. I would be more inclined to use the word habitación as a hotel room, okay? Dormitorio is where you sleep, okay? Dormir. So that's what I would be using for a bedroom. Um, you might talk about la cocina, it could be your cocina en tu casa, la cocina en tu colegio. Um, you might spend a lot of time in your friend's house, so you would say la casa de mi amigo, the house of my friend. Or similarly, you might talk about la sala de. So what I mean by this is the room of, so por ejemplo, todos los lunes, después de las clases, um, toco el violín en la sala de música en mi colegio. So I play the violin in the music room in my school, or I have violin classes in the music room, or something like that, okay? Next thing that we're going to have are sports. And I would say to students as well, that to not just write off sports entirely, even if you don't play them for your oral exam. The examiner could say, well, why do you not like sports? If you could play a sport, what would you play? Um, do you prefer watching sports? Okay, does anyone else in your house like sports? So don't just think that you're like, grand, I don't play a sport, I don't need to have anything cracked on it. Um, so I would maybe make an effort to learn a couple of these at the very least. And none of them are very difficult again. We've got El Football, or El Football Gaelico, would be um, Gaelic Football. El rugby, okay, el baloncesto is basketball, el okay, and just be, be careful how you pronounce that, it's not el okay, it's el okay, okay. Now a word that I'm in, like nearly sure is completely made up, <laughs> it's not as fun it is real, okay, el volleyball is volleyball. Okay, then maybe if you live near the sea or if you are really into sailing, whatever. La vela is the word that we would use for sailing, okay? Um, if you are really into skiing, the verb to ski is esquiar. Um, maybe if you do go to the gym and you might do weight training, you would say entrenar con pesas. So pesas are weights. You can also just use that verb entrenar on its own as the verb to train, okay? Um, and I'm just going to do a couple more here. We've got the verb correr is the verb to run. Hacer. And if any of my fifth years are watching this, they'll know exactly why I'm laughing, okay? Um, a fair footing, I don't know how or why, but it is the verb to go jogging in Spanish, okay? And it's definitely just made up, but that's, it's in books and everything, but I just think that it sounds hilarious, okay? So, a fair footing, or you might like to go for walks in your free time. Ir de paseo is the verb to go for a walk, okay? Now, the last thing here that I'm going to put is a couple, I think there's only three or four of them here, just in terms of others. So, I'm going to have el arte. También podemos utilizar la palabra el dibujo, la música, el baile, and el teatro. Okay, so I'll just put a line underneath that so you know that's where they stop. Okay, so we've got art, and uh, music, dance, and drama. Okay. Now, let's go through the basics first and then I'm going to go through the complex questions. So if you are taking this down or if you're using that template, 
Um, hay seis preguntas básicas y cinco preguntas complejas. So, our basics, we've got six here. So, the first one, what a lot of examiners will tend to ask. Okay, ¿cómo pasas tu tiempo libre o tus ratos libres? And um, the word rato is a Spanish word for a while. So, how do you spend your little bits of free time? Okay, ¿cómo pasas tus ratos libres? Perdón. Okay, number two is a little bit weird, but still basic in the sense that it's not... Sorry, I'm not forgetting my question word in. Um, it's a little bit basic, but it's a bit different, okay? So the question is, ¿Qué odias hacer en tu tiempo libre? What do you hate doing in your free time? So quizás um, odias cuidar a tu hermana, if you hate minding your little sister, um, odias hacer las tareas domésticas, you, help, you hate having to help out at home, whatever it is, okay, just a kind of, and even something that you can use to try and bring in humour, um, and attempt a little bit more of communication, or communicative Spanish in your oral exam. A lot of examiners will ask you something like, ¿Tienes mucho tiempo libre? Do you have a lot of free time? Okay, um, I don't think that this is, in the sense of that it doesn't sound very basic, but it's, a, it's not a hard question to answer. And um, the question is, ¿Tienes una vida equilibrada? Do you have a balanced life? Okay, so think of the word equilibrium, okay, or libra. The star sign is about scales, okay, equilibrada means um, balance. Okay, so do you have a balanced life? And for that, we can talk about there, like, um, la presión y el estrés del año sexto, los estudios que tienes que hacer, um, también los pasatiempos, cuántas horas pasas con tus amigos, todo eso, ok? Eso no es una pregunta muy difícil. Ok, número 5, entonces, um, ¿estás bajo mucha presión este año? ¿Estás bajo mucha presión este año? And the final question then, so we have two options for this, ok? So, Tienes, do you have, or querrías con two hours, un trabajo? Do you have, or would you like, a job? Okay, so maybe if you have kind of four out of six of those done, you might want to take, make the effort to just have the other two, perhaps just on the off chance, because it's a lovely kind of area to be spending a lot of time on in your oral exam, you know, nice and easy. Now, in terms of the questions here being a little bit more complex, it would just be a way for an examiner to try and help you differentiate yourself from the other students. So the first question I'm going to give you here is, si tuvieras más tiempo libre, if you had more free time, what would you do? Que harías? Oh, try not to squash too much. Okay. If you had more free time, what would you do? And all you would need to do to answer that question, you would just say, Si tuviera, so get rid of that or, más tiempo libre, me gustaría, and then just use the infinitive of all of your verbs after that, okay? So if you need a little bit more help with that, maybe just leave a comment down below and I'll show you what I mean, okay? After that then we've got something like, piensas que tener tiempo libre es importante este año, do you think it's important to have free time this year? And then obviously why or why not? Um, número tres, ¿qué son los problemas? So what are, and again, los problemas masculine noun, okay? What are the problems que vienen that come Con la falta de tiempo libre. So what are the problems that come with a lack of free time? Okay, and I'm actually going to write um, four and five over here just so that they're not as squashed, okay? Um, but if I was to answer that question now, like what are the problems that come with a lack of free time? Maybe it might be stress, loneliness, um, anxiety, anything like that, boredom, whatever. So there are three questions. Now, the second last one for our complex questions, number cuatro. Um, hay 
I was going to say, hay bastante, perdón, lost where I was. So, hay bastante, or you could say suficientes, instalaciones para los jóvenes aquí, or in Atlanta. Are there enough, are there sufficient facilities, instalaciones is facilities, okay, for young people here or young people in Ireland? And then, número cinco, ¿Qué son las actividades más populares entre los jóvenes de hoy? Ok, so what are the most popular activities? And then entry we can also use for the English word among. It can also, obviously, we know it means between. So what are the most popular activities among young people today? So that could be spending time on social media, it could be going out, um, whatever it is, but just be prepared that whatever you say is obviously going to steer the conversation into another area, okay? So um, just using that bit of vocab there, if you turn your sheet over, once you have it filled in, then there's a little translation exercise on the back. Um, so when I have free time, I love listening to music, it relaxes me a lot, and it helps me to forget about the stress I'm under from the exams. I can't stop listening to whoever it is and then because and then you can give your reason. And um, I've just left that blank in the, case, in the off chance that anyone actually wants to use that phrase that you can tweak it for yourself. And then we've got, unfortunately, I don't have lots of free time this year because of my studies. My parents want me to get good grades, so I spend four hours a day studying in my bedroom. It's boring but necessary. It's probably how everyone feels at the moment. Um, if I could, I would spend more time relaxing and meeting up with my friends. So there you kind of might use this structure here. Um, it can be difficult to see my group of friends this year because we're always busy and we have so many things to do all the time. And then the last one there, this summer I'm going to have a big break from my studies. Um, fifth year has been difficult, you could also obviously use this for sixth year has been difficult, but I know that I'll need the energy for sixth year or for college. There's always more and more to do, um, which you would be able to use the phrase from last lesson to help you fill that in. And then to relax, I'm going to do whatever because whatever. Okay. So that would be the activity that I would get you to do following using that vocab. And um, again, if you want to send me a photo of any of your answers and I can correct them for you, or if you have any questions, just drop them in the comments down below or get in touch with me on Instagram and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Okay, so I'll see you in our next lesson. Muchísimas gracias. Adios.